I welcome you to the Shallowford Presbyterian Church, and I'm glad that you have found us in this online space as we seek to gather together for worship this last Sunday in January. May the Lord be with us in this time as we seek to serve faithfully. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you. Join me in our call to worship. Our hope is in God all of our lives. God is a rock of refuge, a fortress against threat and shame. God has held us since our birth. So we are never in the full grasp of the unjust and cruel. In love, God saves and supports us. Trusting in God, we continually offer our praise.
God, you have given me the gift of another day. May I live in your gratitude. Help me to be loving to others, to earth, and to myself. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Spirit of life, God of love, open our hearts and enter in, that hearing your word of love, we may become your love for others. Amen. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, O oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the second reading of the day, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as had been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of thee, these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's particularly uh, important this Lord's Day for us to understand the context that our New Testament scripture passage was written in. The church in Corinth 
Well, it was a very conflicted, troubled congregation. They were quarrelsome. They were confused in their spirituality. They were engaged in a lot of power struggles. And so the church, it was in significant distress and disagreement. It was bordering on chaos. And the Apostle Paul pins these words of love to a quite cantankerous people. And he is suggesting a, a rather significant course correction in their religious practices. And so he offers them this image of practicing a more excellent way. And Paul describes this wonderfully poetic image of the way of love that overcomes all obstacles. The apostle defines what love is and what love is not. Paul paints an image of love that makes us think of a lens through which all of our actions are interpreted. Love is the foundation and the ground of our being. Some of us have read a bit of Dame Julian, who was a 14th century English mystic writer, and she writes in the Celtic tradition, and Julian says that at the heart of our desires is this love longing, as she calls it. This love longing is the most sacred and the most natural of our yearnings. Listen deeply, Julian says, for the desire of the soul, for that is the desire of God. Julian reminds us that we are made of God, and so we are grounded in the desires of God. And grace is given to us to bring us back to that blessed point from which we came, of God. And so this work of love, it is our lifelong quest to live into. And love, it requires the formation of character. Love is forged over time. These are learned patterns of behavior. And therefore, we seek to develop these ancient daily spiritual practices to give our heart and our soul opportunity to hear this ancient drumbeat of love that stirs in our soul. And this is disciplined daily formation that takes commitment and dedication. And Julian says that the deeper we move within the human soul, the closer we come to this divine love and the greater our longing will be. The nature of love, she says, leads to suffering. It is because we love that we are in grief when loved ones die. Love causes us pain when our children suffer. And it is, it is because we love our nation that we are in agony in the times that we now live in. It is because we love the earth that we weep as she is being violated. When Julian says, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, she utters this in, in the confidence that despite immense pain and suffering, despite the powerful, destructive powers that move within us and all of creation, these love longings of God, they will never cease. 
and that they will never be erased from the human soul. Finally, the Apostle Paul and Julian speak of humility. Paul reminds us that we act constantly on incomplete information, that we must act in humility, understanding that our knowledge is partial. We see into a mirror dimly, he says. Without humility, Julian says, we cannot love. Without humility, we will not find together the holy ground from which we come. Without humility, we will not hear again the deepest stirrings in the soil of our soul, the sound of love. John Philip Newell, a modern day Celtic theologian and prophet, tells a really captivating story in his book, Christ of the Celts. He tells about being invited to share a sweat lodge with leaders of the Cree nation. I'll read that story for us. Noel says that 12 of us, including nine native elders, gathered in the early morning by the lodge at its highest point, this rounded structure framed with curved branches and covered with blankets and hide stands about five feet tall and 10 feet in diameter. A flap was opened on the side and we bent low to enter. At its center was a pit into which hot rocks from an overnight fire were placed. And we sat in a circle, stripped one bare shoulder pressed against another in the round. And when the flap closed, we were in total darkness. For my sake, some words of welcome were spoken in English by the oldest elder. He then moved into Cree, sprinkling onto the rocks pieces of sage that sparked a light and scented the lodge. Then the chanting, rattling, and drumbeat began. In no time, the space heated up, and I felt our bodies bowing together toward the earth to seek its coolness. With a sprig of spruce dipped in water, the leader began to splash the burning rocks. And with each splash, steam gushed up from the pit. Again and again, he splashed. And now we were no longer simply bowing toward the earth. We were hugging it, desperately embracing the cool ground because our bodies were on fire with heat. Cries unintelligible to me were coming from the others in the circle, and I felt I could not endure it physically any longer. After a final shout, the flap came up, and it was the end of the first of the four sessions, one for each of the earth's directions. We had begun with the West, the setting of the sun and the season of autumn and Earth's time of dying. We moved next to the North to winter and the season of barrenness. And after each session, which lasted about 20 minutes, I was invited to step outside for a breath of fresh air, although most of the elders remained seated inside. After the end of the second session, standing next to the flap and the freezing cold of winter, I thought I was going to faint. And it occurred to me that I did not know where to place my body. Should I fall into the snow, I thought, which was about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, or back into the lodge with its 150 plus temperatures. So I said to the youngest elder about my age, standing beside me, I, I think I'm going to be sick. I think I'm going to black out. It was at this point that the young elder, who had previously been hesitant to speak about the ritual, chose to offer some wisdom. The more I came to know him, the more I realized that it was not that he did not want to share with me, it was that he did not want to place himself above me as my teacher. But now that I needed help, he spoke. 
Your body is trying to tell you that it is in control, he said. It does not like what is happening, so it's trying to bail out. But we do not believe the body is the center of our being. And when you go back into the sweat lodge, perhaps your mind will tell you that it is in control and will produce a convincing reason for you to leave. But we do not believe that the mind is the center of our being either. Here we are seeking to be renewed in the ground that is deeper than our bodies and minds, the one ground of life from which we and all things come. He then offered me a cup of ice-cold water. And the words and the water mingled in me to give me strength. The sessions that followed were hotter still, with fresh burning rocks added from the fire. But the young elder had opened in me the way to continue and to be blessed. At the end of the fourth round, the south summer, the season of green and new life, we lay still stripped on the naked floor of an unheated cabin nearby, allowing coolness to re-enter our bodies. We lay in stillness as a bowl of stewed berries and honey was passed from one person to the next in the circle of communion. Never has my body supped such sweetness from the earth. After a while, I broke the silence with a question. What was the phrase that you were repeating as you chatted at the beginning of each round? And there was no reply for at least a minute. And long after I'd given up hope of being answered, the oldest elder responded. We were praying for you, he said, and for your people. My people, the people who had so wronged his people. My people, the people who could not hear the sound of love and wisdom in his people. For many months after this experience, I could not speak about it without either weeping or being close to tears. I still do not understand why entirely, but I do know that I was in touch in a new way with the pain of a terrible brokenness that we had inflicted on an ancient people of wisdom. And I also know that in the prayers of the sweat lodge and in the heart of that elder, I heard the sound of love in a way that further awakened my desire to change and to be part of the healing of the earth. Within that love, I heard a great strength of soul. Julian says the soul is highest, noblest, worthiest, when it is lowest, humblest, and gentlest. In my native brothers, I experienced the strength of humility, of being close to the ground or the humus of our being. And I saw in a new way what Julian means when she says that Christ is the one who connects us to the great root of our being. I pray that as a community, we may seek this Christ, the great root of our being, as we seek to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, I may see.
sometimes strangely thin. Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control, our spirits long. Join me in our responsive prayers of intercession. God of all goodness, we live in times of stress and controversy, injustice and cruelty. At times we cry to you for rescue and remember that we have leaned on you since our birth as we pray. O God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for leaders and nations around the world that they may seek justice and peace. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for your church in all its forms that we may be the love you want. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for victims of domestic violence and victims of war. Grant your healing and give your peace. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for those trapped by natural disaster. Embrace them with your calm and send them relief. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for those trapped by natural disaster. Embrace them with your calm and send them relief. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for those who are ill or suffering, that they may feel the comfort of your love. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for your creation, that the health of the earth may be restored. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. We pray for those who are born today and those who will die today. May their quality of life be governed by loving choices. O oh God of all creation, be our hope and trust. God, our wisdom, enable us to be humble and kind in all things. Remind us that whatever the issue, today we know only in part. And even now, faith, hope, and love abide. And the greatest of these is love. Help us to be like you, love. Through Jesus Christ, our friend and Savior. Amen. O oh God, bless these gifts that we have given as expressions of our love for you and our neighbors, that they may bring closer to fulfillment 
your reign of peace and love through Jesus Christ, our sovereign. Amen. in God's mercy like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is no place where a sorrows are more found than all Swearer's failings have such kindly judgment God is a refuge, but never an escape. Therefore, go this day into a world where things are being pulled down and overthrown, where things are being built and planted. Go this day open to the surprise of what God is doing and where and with whom God is at work. Go this day with the love of God made visible to you.